to the Redline Productions proudly presents Today's To The Redline review was made possible in part by Hey YouTube, well today let's take a look at, take a look at a car that you all are quite familiar with. Hyundai is quite proud of this vehicle. This is their uh, 2011 Hyundai Sonata. This particular one is a limited trim level. It doesn't have the 2 liter turbo. I still would love to show you guys that one, but this one just has their standard 2.4 direct injection that everybody pretty much has these days. Anyways, this Sonata came out in late 2010 as an 11. This one's a first model year, and it really just, you know, shocked the uh, mid-size sedan class, just because you know, think in 2011 there was the boring Camry, the Accord was getting pretty stale, uh, and this thing really has that swoopy coupe-like styling that uh, Volks the Volkswagen CC has, the Mercedes CLS, and it's kind of started um, you know, a styling war in the mid-size class. Now Ford's new 13 Fusion looks even better than this car. You know, in terms of how this car still looks today, um, you know, I never really was that really impressed with this car when it first came out, but I'm gonna keep an open mind because you know I, I, I don't I think I don't give Hyundai's enough of a chance. It's a nice car I'd recommend this car to somebody over like a, an 11 Camry in a heartbeat um, In terms of how the styling has aged to me. I think it still looks like a good car I'm not sure how it'll look five years down the road But you know in 2012 almost 13. It still looks like a pretty good car today Hyundai's updated the car slightly in terms of feature content, but the styling still looks the same so don't expect the 13s to look any different. I personally think the grille is my biggest issue, and I would definitely take the Kia Optima sister car over the Sonata just because I prefer the styling aesthetics of the Kia over this car. This car to me just seems so curvy and so feminine, and you do, no offense, you do see a lot of women driving this car, and it's a good choice. I'm not, I'm not telling them not to, but I feel like the, the guys tend to choose the Optima in terms of looks. Now, this particular limited model does come standard with Hyundai's Smart Key Access System. Uh, to lock the door, you can just push this button right here, and the doors will lock. To unlock the door, you just push the button again, and the doors will unlock, while, all while keeping the key in your pocket. Now, coming inside, this one does have a pretty nice contrasting interior uh, with your beige leather and your black accents on the top, so it's a pretty nice looking interior. Stepping inside, uh, the styling of the interior is quite striking. It, it, it's a good match for the exterior. I like the design of the interior. It looks, ple it looks aesthetically pleasing to me. Here's the key for the vehicle. It's huge. I really think Hyundai needs to use a smaller, like, less thick key. This thing was, this thing just takes up all the real estate in my pocket. But you do have a nice push button uh, start here to start the engine, so put your foot on the brake. And the gauges, I think they're actually quite, you know, nice to look at. I actually prefer the look of these gauges over the gauges in the Kia Optima. This particular one is fully loaded. It's got your sunroof, navigation, backup camera, so it's a pretty high trim Sonata. I'll show you my criticisms for this car later in the video, but closing the door, you only have an automatic up-down driver window. A lot of competitors give you the uh, passenger window to be automatic up down as well, so that's a little confusing. Uh, in terms of the rest of the interior quality, you have soft touch plastics on the dashboard. It's all really nice materials. This right here is hard plastic though. I'm surprised this isn't soft touch. It's all hard plastic down here. Uh, you have a nice hidden storage compartment right here, actually. I didn't realize that this was a nice storage compartment. It's hard plastic right here on the gauge hood, so the materials in here are kind of just average to me. They're not really, you know, stellar ahead of the class. You have soft touch materials right here. It's hard plastic right here as well. And the, the graining feels nice, but the plastic kind of just feels a little cheap. You have nice padded right here where your arm rests or where your elbows are gonna rest. So they did a good job there. My biggest gripe is the steering wheel. I hate the steering wheel in this car. It's ugly to look at. I don't like this contrast color right here. Um, and my biggest issue is it's leather wrapped, but it's not leather wrapped on this, on this part right here. Like, and it's leather wrapped down here. Why would they do that? It just looks cheap to me that they didn't include the entire steering wheel to be leather wrapped, and they really just need to get rid of the steering wheel. Uh, Six-speed automatic transmission is standard with the Limited. You can get a six-speed manual on the GLS trim, um, but six-speed automatic is the only transmission on the Limited. You have a nice center console here with a nice padded armrest, and you have two-tier storage. Uh, the armrest, however, does not slide, but it is, it is at a nice angle, so it is um, a nice spot for your elbow. Cup holders here. You have your iPod. USB uh, connection right there, which but to use an iPod you actually have to get a special connector from Hyundai. I don't like that. I'd rather just stick my USB in there. A nice uh, glove box here, which is on the small side actually, and it's not really lined in felt, and it is damp slightly. 
but it could be a little bit more damped. Now, this particular one, since it's a limited, does give you a nice backup camera when you put it in reverse. A little slow to respond, but it does give you nice distance markings and trajectory, so it's a better backup camera than Honda's backup camera system. And this particular one also has your navigation system with some pretty nice graphics on the map quality. I'm actually really impressed with the graphics. I prefer that screen over what Honda offers in their navigation systems. Now, coming to the rear seat of the Sonata, it is class competitive, and the materials do carry through. They're pretty much the same from the front seats coming to the backs, and you do have heated rear seats. I know Hyundai likes to brag about that in their Elantra, but you get it in the Sonata as well. Now, stepping inside, duck your head because of that styling. This roof line's really low, so people who are tall are going to be hitting their heads if they don't watch it. There's nice vents back here. You have storage mat pockets right there. You have a nice center armrest here. No pass-through, but the seats are 60-40 with cup holders here. It's a fairly comfortable back seat, but the headroom could definitely be better, but that's one of the sacrifices you make with the swoopy coupe-like styling. Now, the trunk of the vehicle actually pops open a little bit for you when you push the button to open the trunk. Opening the trunk, it's actually a pretty large size. I believe it's about 15 and a half cubic feet. Pretty large opening as well. You can see there is your uh, pull down for your 60-40 split rear seats. Underneath here you have your compact spare tire, as most vehicles have today, and it's nicely lined. It's a fairly competitive, competitive trunk. Under the swoopy coupe like styling, you do have Hyundai's new for 2011 2.4 liter GDI with Saints Work gasoline direct injection, four cylinder engine, 24 valves. Makes impressive powers 198 horsepower on this limited, 186 foot pounds of torque, or 184, I'm sorry. You get an SC, it's got dual exhaust that makes 200 horsepower and 186 foot pounds of torque. Impressive numbers, and it moves the car out well. I just don't like the way the engine sounds. It's not very revvy, it's not very racy, not like um, what I'm used to in, I guess, Honda's K-Series motor. But this engine does offer a lot more torque than the non-direct injection 20, K24 that's in the Accord. But let's take a look at how this car drives. All right, so for those of you who are interested in the uh, current generation Sonata, let's take a look at how this car drives. I do really like push button start. I don't have a car with push button start, I'm really getting used to it. But anyways, this car is pretty easy to drive. Uh, the A pillar right here is pretty thick, so the visibility in here is not as good as you know the class leading Accord is. But uh, it's actually pretty good. In terms of width, it feels about as wide as the other cars. Um, headroom is on the tight side just because of the swoopy styling. The steering is typical Hyundai. It's really light and devoid of feel. It feels like a Toyota, honestly. Wish Hyundai would uh, learn to tune their steering better just to give you a little bit more confidence from behind the wheel. Now one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, the bat is the uh, 2.4 liter actually feels a little bit more racy and revvy when you're actually driving the car as opposed to when I was just revving it for you guys. But uh, the six-speed automatic is just my biggest gripe. It shifts fine, but it just shifts too slowly. It doesn't have a sport mode either to speed up the shifts. It just, when you swap it into manual mode, there's no S mode. It just gives you, you know, control of manual gates, which doesn't, it doesn't really rev match on downshifts. It's pretty slow to shift. I can knock, I knock it up the, sh or I, I shift up and it takes, count like one two and it shifts for you finally this is not not a sporting car which is fine that's not what the sonata's mission is but um other cars in the class i just i have to compare it to other cars in the class because they're they give you more of a sporty drive in terms of the ride comfort this one's good uh nice soft ride it's a little bit on the floaty side to me the steering is just numb this car just doesn't really inspire much confidence or you know doesn't really urge you on to you know go on a mountain road and attack some corners but um, I'm not sure if the Kia Optima actually does either. I need to drive an SX Optima with the turbo engine. But you know, this thing is pretty, it's just a safe car and it's a really nice style. So I would still recommend the Sonata to somebody who's looking for, you know, a car that'll take them to point A to point B and offers a little bit of style, a little bit of uniqueness to the styling. So if you guys are in the market for an 11 Sonata or for a Sonata in general, I probably would recommend the Optima for its better looks, and uh, i probably recommend the turbo engine because this one's rated at 2235. The turbo, I think, is at 2234. You might as well go with the turbo with 274 horsepower. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my quick overview of this 2011 Hyundai Sonata. Uh, if you're in the market for one, definitely check one out. They're worth a look. 
But thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Yeah, here's some legal stuff for you. The views and opinions expressed in the following video may not necessarily reflect those of the title holding automotive dealer or the entity they represent. All videos are filmed with permission by a professional driver on a set course with the collaboration and assistance of local law enforcement authorities. Do not attempt. Logos and brandings of vehicle manufacturers, dealerships, and online social media sites are the sole property of their respective representation used with permission. The two, the Redline logo, soundtrack, and web resources, as well as all of their associated media are copyrighted intellectual property of two, the Redline LLC. All rights reserved.